Hey folks, Josh here. A quick uh, tutorial on how to upgrade your uh, fireplace switch to a smart switch. I'll be covering a number of different solutions off here. First though, let's just quickly review. This is the switch that I pulled out of the fireplace. It was connected to these two terminals. And um, we want to start by verifying the, the circuit logic of the legacy switch. So I'm just going to connect my multimeter in to the old switch. This is a 1001 uh, series switch. They're very common. I've got off, on, and remote. Generally, this is operated in the remote position where the remote acts basically as a cordless thermostat. So when room temperature drops below target temperature, this remote just sends a command to the switch. And the switch in turn um, triggers the circuit on the fireplace. So let's just quickly connect this up. see here uh, in the off position the circuit is open and in the on position the circuit is closed so that that is a very basic circuit the other thing we can do here is determine what voltage the fire the fireplace itself its control unit is supplying that switch circuit with it'll vary from fireplace to fireplace uh, this one is very low voltage and we just want to double check then make sure that the relay or smart switch that we purchase is going to handle the normally open circuit as well as the voltage that's on that circuit. So I'm going to disconnect these and we'll review the, uh, the solution. So make sure that you have a splicer, a crimper, connectors, connector covers before you get started. Uh, starting with the Philips Hue solution, you know, this smart relay uh, is designed to be fed, uh, uh, supplied with a 7 to 32 volt DC or AC. That is wired into those two posts. This smart relay optionally takes a USB supply that's 5.5 volts. There's the actual smart switch, that's the Zigbee antenna there, and that's the relay coil. So this Philips Hue Bridge is going to be controlling this Zigbee relay. And then we've got normally open, normally closed, the common post. We know that this circuit is normally open. And so what I've done is I've wired the relay into the fireplace using the normal, normally open and the common posts. It doesn't actually matter which order those are connected into the fireplace. And again, I'm not supplying this with a DC or, uh, or AC dedicated feed. I'm, I'm just using USB. Low voltage and USB can be fished through the walls. Uh, without uh, electrical code concerns, but if you were to buy a smart relay that was taking line voltage, then you would need to follow code on on how that uh, on how that power supply is delivered to the relay. So I have a uh, a Hue bridge. I've got the Hue app, and from the Hue app, I have my uh, fireplace control. And really all we're doing is we're closing and opening a circuit on the fireplace uh, switch control module. And we're doing that using uh, a Philips Hue bridge to a Zigbee smart relay. Now I've wired in a separate solution. You would not typically have two smart switches relayed into the same fireplace, but for the sake of this demonstration, I've done that. Um, so completely separate solution that would not require any of these components is a home kit solution. Different from the Zigbee smart relay, which requires a Zigbee hub for control, uh, Apple home kit can be controlled directly from iOS or OS X devices. However, if you want to be able to control those devices when you're not home or run automations against those devices, you would require a home kit hub. Various devices are supported uh, as home kit hubs. Apple TV, iPads, uh, HomePods. So um, what I was a, what I had to do, I was not able to order an all-in-one smart relay as I could with Zigbee for HomeKit. Uh, so what I've done is I've ordered a generic uh, relay and a, uh, a HomeKit switch. Depending on the wiring at your fireplace, you might go with a wall outlet or you might go with a switch, but you're gonna be dealing with line voltage. So you'll be switching 120 volts AC. So when you order your relay, you want to order a relay where the coil is triggered by 120 volt AC. That coil is to the left. And then we've got the typical uh, 
relay circuit here I've got normally open uh, in the center, normally closed to the right, and then my common wire. The same uh, three posts exist on, on the smart relay. Relays in general have a coil with a normally open, a normally closed, and a common. And uh, this smart relay is wired and normally open. This relay will be wired and normally open as well. Something that's nice about this relay is that it, it will fit uh, recessed inside of a, an elect electrical box leaving room for the uh, receptacle or switch to be installed on top. It's a little tight with these small ones, but it does fit. Uh, obviously, we're using the correct sized connectors and connector covers inside the box. Uh, and the fact that the relay is inside the box um, allows us to do line voltage triggering inside of, uh, of code compliance. I've got a wire running in the box, uh, Romex that goes ultimately into uh, the HomeKit smart, smart switch. So I'm triggering the smart switch, which ultimately uh, is triggering the coil on this relay, which is wired in to the fireplace for control. And so in this case, I'll, I'll open my, you know, I'm in the Philips Hue app right now. I'll switch over to my HomeKit app. Whoops. And you can see that I get the same functionality um, in HomeKit that I had with the Philips Hue Bridge. So again, in recap, uh, with, the hip, with the Philips Hue Bridge, although I do have uh, compatibility with multiple home systems, uh, this is not a HomeKit uh, accessory, and so it cannot be exported outside of Philips Hue. This accessory uses Zigbee to communicate with uh, Philips Hue and, and can peer with multiple external uh, automations, home automation solutions. For Apple HomeKit, on the other hand, I'm using a HomeKit uh, licensed device for control from HomeKit and I am triggering a relay, which in turn uh, is controlling uh, the fireplace circuit. Thanks for watching. Feel free to post any questions. Have a good one.